Now, I mentioned that we want to understand why these equations work and whether they give us a correct result. Single and yeah. For complete linkage, this can be any dissimilarity. It does not even have to be non-negative. We could have negative values in there. We would choose the smallest one, it, it will work. And if we use the minimum instead of the maximum, we can also use a similarity function. That is not true for all linkages. It's true for complete and single link and average linkage. And that's a part of the next section, to understand why this works for some and does not work for others. So single and complete linkage are trivial cases. And that's because of the distributivity of the min and the max operation. So because the minimum of, the minimum of A, B and C is the same as the minimum of A and the minimum of B and C. I can rearrange this. It does not matter in which order I analyze this. It will still be the minimum. That's a type of distributivity. The, these two cases are simple. And similar for the, for the group average, because it's a sum, and sums also are nicely behaved. But we can um, look at this in more detail on group average. The way I defined the group average in a closed form equation was as the weighted average or the average of any A from A and any C from a second cluster C. And since I have A times C such combinations, I have this normalization term in here. But it is the average of like this part of the matrix, this sub part of the matrix. Now computing this is of course in A times C time. So the larger my clusters get, the more expensive it becomes to compute this. That's why I want to find a shortcut to do that. Now I want to look at the merge of A and B. So that's my current operation, what I just changed on the matrix. I'm assuming that what I, my current state is correct, and now I'm making a change, and I need to make sure that the result is still correct. And that's what I need to do with the Lance Williams equations. I need to compute the correct value of the cell containing the distance of C to AB. And the equation that we are given here, oh, there's an inconsistency. I have to fix this. This is, of course, the number of objects of A. We'll be using the other notation later. And the, what we are given is we are using this weighted average of the distances. So A times the one distance plus B times the other distance divided by A plus B in size. If one cluster is twice as large as the other, it gets twice as much inf effect on the outcome, and it will be weighted one-third and two-thirds. So if you put this in here, and this one is also, of course, size of A, the number of objects in A, um, I just pulled out this, this common division. And now I can plug in the definition of this distance function. So I'm taking this equation and putting it in here for AC, and I'm putting it in here with A replaced by B. It has to hold for both of them if our result before was correct. So we're performing what is called a structural induction. And I get these in here, and this A, cancels out with this one. And same does this B. 
it will cancel out with this one, and all that remains is one divided by C in both of them. So I can pull this out. And both sums here run over C, so this is the same. And here I'm summing over objects in B, here I'm summing over objects in A, so I'm summing over both of them. They have to be disjoint, so this is the same. And now, what I get is this equation again, where I replaced A by A cup B. So my result is correct. But I can now know that I can compute it using this equation. This equation takes O of 1 time to compute. This equation takes O of n squared time to compute. But if it's that large, I won't have, have to compute it n times. So it's not as bad. It won't get me up to uh, n to the power of 4. But yeah. So this is, the, this is the equation that is definitely one to prefer for computing the similarity. But that is exactly the Lance Williams equation that we had. The third and the fourth term, the gamma and the delta, they were um, gamma and beta. They were all zero. So we have essentially proven that the Lance Williams equation for group average is correct. But this was quite easy because it was just a sum that we were using and we could pull out the normalization term. This term does play a role, but it um, does not depend on any property of my distance function. I'm not using metric, I'm not using symmetry, I'm not using anything here, I'm not using that it's not negative. I can put a similarity function there and I get the exact same computation, the same proof. So it works also for similarities. And there's the, there's the other linkage where we essentially replace the, leave out this term, and that also works. But then I don't have um, a closed, or well, I'm not leaving out this one, I'm leaving out these ones. And then I can't um, get this nicely closed equation up there. It gets more interesting when we look at centroid and metroid linkage. They have an interesting geometrical property. So the, the idea of centroid linkage was that when I'm merging two clusters, my cluster A and my cluster B, that's the mean that I have there. Then I have a new mean that is somewhere in between. And in this case, it's probably one, two thirds of this one and one third of this one, weighted, weighted with two thirds and one third. So I'm closer to A because it has more weight. But it has then to be on the linear connection between these two. And the weight depends on how many points there are in A. But that kind of re just results from I am having like size of A plus size of B objects and then I'm taking the sum of all X in A cup B uh, X. And that is my, my mean. And I can decompose this into two parts, one coming from A, one coming from B. So that is, that is very obvious how I want to use this if I would look at all my coordinates. But in each merge, iterating over the points, iterating over all the dimensions gets expensive. So finding the means is not that elegant. So 
that is the motivation of centroid linkage. And medoid linkage is pretty much the same thing, except I'm ignoring that the clusters have different size. But I'm treating every cluster as, as being a single point only. And after merging, it's still a single point. That's why the medoid linkage is kind of odd. It ignores these weights. But the proof would remain the same, except I have to cancel out, um, remove all these sizes. Now, I have this geometry on the right-hand side that I indicated. I have my point A, I have my point B, I have my other cluster C, and I have my new cluster center that is in between of A and B. Well, I have a triangle in here. Since this point lies on the line from A to B, that's three points. Three points are planar. I don't have to think about how many dimensions I have. I can lie, lay a plane through this and work in this plane. In this plane, I have an angle down here, gamma. And now I can look at the length in here of this triangle. And the law of cosines tells me that this long edge opposite to C is to the square. Is this edge AC to the square plus this edge BC to the square minus two times the product of these two edges and the cosine of the angle in between. So if these two vectors would point in the same direction, I would have a high cosine, I would remove much of this distance, and if they were pointing into opposite directions, then I would not remove anything here. So that is the, the very classic geometric um, law of cosines. I can rearrange this, because I will be using this below. And I'm interested in this part. This is the, the ugly term that I don't want to compute the angle. So, and I want to eliminate this term later on. And because of the law of cosines, I have a nice replacement. That's three values that I know. So I can compute this in O of one. It's a constant computation. So I want to replace it with this. Now I'm using almost the same thing. It's kind of the parallelogram law, and of course it does relate to the law of cosines. It's a variant of, one, of it. And I'm using it on this parallelogram that you can see in here. That parallelogram arises from this weighting that I have. So in this example, I have one third weight here, and I'm two thirds of this length. And I'm also two thirds here and one third here. And one third here and two thirds here. This way I get a parallelogram. And I'm interested in this distance, because that is the distance of my other point C, my other cluster C, to the center of the merged clusters. That's the one that I want to compute. And by the um, parallelogram law, it's A squared plus B squared plus 2AB cos gamma. Again, the angle plays a role. That is very similar, except that up there I had a minus, and here I now have a plus. That is kind of because I'm looking at a different diagonal. I would get the minus if I were looking at this diagonal. But I'm looking at the long one, and the long one has a plus in there. Now, I have to have A, B, and find A, B, and B. That's these two edges. But in order for these lines to be parallel, and these lines to be parallel, this ratio here 
needs to be the same as this one. And this ratio needs to be the same. So in, in the illustration, it's one third and two thirds, if I'm not mistaken. So I have, I actually know these values. Namely, this is size of A divided by size of A plus size of B. And this is size of B divided, or the other way around, um, by A and size of B, um, the other way around. That's the tricky part. Um, because it's a weighting on the, um, when computing the average. So the, the larger cluster has more weight and pulls closer. So I know these terms. And because of this, I know my A and B. And I can put them into this equation. And C is the distance that I'm looking for. So this, this is C. And um, well, this is A squared, and this is B squared. And then I have to take my A and B and my gamma and this 2 and multiply all of that. And I get this, um, this product, which is the multiplication of these two terms, A times B divided by A plus B squared. So that's, uh, yeah. And well, this term is this one, this one. We can substitute it. We get rid of the cosine. Instead, we get this. And now I just have to rearrange all of that to, to make the, the matching parts meet. So I have this one here and here. So I need to take the square of this plus this. It will always have um, A plus B in the, um, in the bottom. Uh, it will, one will cancel out. That's why it's no longer squared afterwards. I have um, A squared here on the left-hand side. So this will give me A size squared divided by A plus B squared plus A times B divided by the same thing. I can pull out the A and I get A plus B remaining that I can eliminate. And this way, I get these weighting factors in here. And this one just remains. And that's the three factors we have in the Lenz-Williams equations. So the Lenz-Williams equation for centroid linkage is correct. Now, if we look at medoid linkage, we don't have this nice solution of medoid linkage that we could compare to. But if we set A and B to be 1, then this becomes 1 half, this becomes 1 half, and this becomes 1 2 squared, minus 1 fourth. And that's exactly the terms that we get in the Lenz-Williams equations. So the lenz william equation for medoid linkage is the same as centroid linkage. I'm just ignoring the size. Another interesting case is ward linkage. And I need two slides to prove this. Ward linkage is the increase in squared deviations. It's not directly the square deviations, but the change. I want to merge those clusters 
such that my total sum of squares increases the least. So I'm measuring how much worth does my so, uh, approximation get if I merge clusters. And I can write this down. So I want to look at m the merging cost of A and C. That is the deviation of every point in both of them from the common mean minus if I had A and if I had C separate. So that's like the, the after, and this is the before the merge. So that is a good starting point if I want to measure the increase in sum of squares. Sum of squares afterwards minus sum of squares before. Makes sense. Now I can transform these. And that's um, where it kind of gets interesting. This sum iterates over all points in A and all points in B. So I split it. I can iterate over A and then I iterate over B and add them. That means I can put these into one equation. And I can put the others into a second equation. That's this one here. Now for every point in A, I have the distance to the common mean minus the distance to the previous mean. And for every point in B in C, I have the distance to the previous mean minus the distance to the current mean, the squared distance. Yeah, that's also a point that I uh, meant to, to emphasize in the previous one. All the computations that we did worked on squared distances. These squares come from these laws, cosines from the parallelograms. It only holds for the squared values. And the same thing is here. We are always working with the sum of squares. So we get kind of a squared distance in here. Now, I can make an interesting move here. I use a theorem that is called König Huygens. In German it's also called as Steinerscher Verschiebungssatz. So you should have learned that in statistics and mathematics, linear algebra or something like that. It is a very important uh, proof related to computing variance. And well, sum of squares is related to variance. And I can make a generalized version from this. And the generalized version says, my deviation from some arbitrary A squared, my squared errors from this A, is my squared errors from the correct mean plus the deviation from this other point to the mean for every x that's that I'm looking at. So I get this, this factor n in here. And if we set x to zero, a to zero, then this may become a, an equation that looks more fa familiar. I'm writing it as expected value. That is often called the algebraic equation of the variance times n in this case. So that's why it's a generalization, because we allow other a in this case. And now we can uh, plug this in here, because we know that this mean of A and C is not the correct mean. That's an A. 
So I can split this one into the deviation from mu of a, and this will cancel out. And the same over here, I can use this as my a, sorry, wrong arrow. I can use this as a, and then this term and this term will cancel out because there's a minus here. So these disappear and all that remains is this part. And that is what we get here and here, once for a and once for n. And the cool thing is, the sum is gone. We don't have any sum in here anymore. But it's only about the distances, the squared deviations of our centers. And that is a very, very interesting property um, that affects a lot of squared error type of algorithms. In many cases, it, if I'm looking at the change in variance, it does not matter how the variance is distributed within a part, but only at how far away these two parts are that they combine. I don't need the individual points anymore. I only need their means and their weights. And I can now continue working with this because I still have this combined mean in here that I don't quite like that much. But I know that mu of AC is a combination, a weighted combination, namely size of A divided by size of AC times my first mean plus size of C divided by AC mu c. Pretty much the same thing as we had on the previous slide. The new mean must be the, uh, on the connection between these two on this line. But I'm removing the mu a again. And that will lead to this negative term here. I'm removing more than I had. I had um, a, and I'm removing a plus c divided by a plus c, so I rem there's a minus c remaining. And the same thing happens symmetrically on the other one, except I have the minus in here. Now this is a square, so I can pull out a minus and it disappears. So I can make this a plus and I can make this a minus. Nothing changes. Difference AB and the difference BA has the same length. And now I want to simplify this. And I have a lot of stuff everywhere. A plus C, A plus C, A plus C, A plus C. It's everywhere in there. So I pull this out. But it's to the power of two if I pull it out. I have a C in here. I can pull this out. I have an A in here. I can pull this out. So I want to get an A times in here. I want to get a C times here. And then by doing, by pulling all that out and canceling out, I get this equation in the bottom. And I get it twice. Once from this part and once from this part. It's completely symmetric what I'm doing here. So the distance of two clusters, A in C, if I'm looking at the increase in variance, depends on their means and on the cluster sizes but not how the points are distributed within these partitions. 
we will omit this two. It's a constant factor that we would have to write all in every, all the equations. That is a pain. And you will, this factor will be missing from a lot of presentations of Watt's linkage. And it doesn't really matter. It just means you have to scale everything by two. But we haven't proven Watt linkage yet. To do this, to make it more readable, I'm now using a shortcut version. So I'm writing N, A, B, C if I mean the number of objects in A plus the number of objects in B plus the number of objects in C. Right? But if I would spell this out, the, the frame would overflow. It would be too much, too large equations. It's much more readable if I use the N. The second part that I'm using is what I just proven. That is the previous slide. And I'm using essentially a binomial equation, except that it's for vectors, because we are in multivariate space. But it is still the, the usual um, binomial that you would get um, if you use a minus b squared, then you have a squared plus b squared minus 2ab. And this is my 2ab, except that it's vectors now. This is a squared b squared, and that is this term that I pull to the other side. So that is the binomial. And now I can perform this very lengthy proof. Will take some time, unfortunately. <laughs> and we want to find the distance when merging AB to some cluster C and its square distances. Then it is the distance of the means that is this equation that we proved on proven on the previous slide. So that's my starting point. Now, I, mu AB is the weighted mean. It's NA by NAB times the mu of A plus NB by NAB mu of B. Same thing again all the time. So I can expand this in here. So I don't have this um, common mean anymore. And now I can pull out this term, I, one by NAB to the square. And it will cancel out once. And it will appear down here once. That's because of the square. And then I have th this remaining, this remaining, and here I had to add it before I can re could remove it. So this gets this factor. And I can now rearrange this because NAB is NA plus NB, the number of objects in AB. They all have to be disjoint, otherwise it would be wrong, but all our clusters that we merge were disjoint. So I can split this, and for my NA, I get the difference of the mean to C, and same thing on the right-hand side. Now I have to further rearrange this. Let's just see. Now I'm using um, another version of the binomial. So I'm expanding this square in here. But I have the additive version. So I have a plus b squared equals a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. This is a, this is b. This is a squared, this is b squared, this is 2ab. 
it's the vector version, so I have to put the transpose in there to be formally correct. So far, so good. But this term is, isn't that nice. So I'm now using the, the other direction. I'm now using this back substitution. And it doesn't have this NAB, so this remains. And this is now U and V. Two U transposed V. So I have U squared, V squared, and this is U minus V. Now this U minus V term back there looks ugly. But these cancel out. That's minus mu c minus minus mu c. So it's minus mu c plus mu c. That's zero. So this disappears. And I can. Now collect those that have the same term. A minus mu, A minus mu, and the back one, last one is A minus B. And I can collect these, and I have this one remaining. And that, this is the last one. This is my second one. And that is the first one. And here I had NA squared plus NAB. And it's easy to see that NA squared plus NAB equals NA times, um, sorry, there's only a B back there. So NA, NA times NB. I can pull out an NA, then I have the sum of these two. So that's how I get this term here. So now this begins to look um, much more manageable. I only have this kind of mixed um, multipliers in here. And I can distribute this prefix, this outer term, on all three of them. And I can rearrange them. Some terms will cancel out. So um, this NAB and this one will, for example, cancel out. And this one will cancel out, but this one won't. And this way I can re uh, distribute all of them. And I can introduce some that I don't seem to need in this moment. But I will use them. But I have them in the top and the bottom, so that's fine. Because now, these are the same. And this is the same. We're using this equality. So I finally succeeded in rewriting my distance of a union B to any other cluster C in terms of the distance of A to C, the distance of B to C, and the distance between A and B. And this is my alpha 1, this is my alpha 2, and this is my beta from the Lance williams equations. So the Lenz-Williams equation does indeed compute the increase in variance, or the increase in sum of squares, so not the scaled variance. Except that it doesn't actually look at the coordinates at all. It doesn't look at the data. It only aggregates pairwise distances. And that, that's where the, where the magic in these equations comes from. 
these constants. <laughs>